Hey guys, so apart from structural characteristic and operational characteristics, the third most important thing that a technology architect must consider are cross-cutting architectural characteristics. Now these are something that I call as intangible characteristics in the sense they are not at the core level, they don't make or break a technology architecture. And even if you skip them, it's not like it's going to make your complete technology architecture collapse. So they're more of additions in the sense if they are great, uh, if, if they're added, it'll be great. It'll make the technology architecture really, really good. Uh, so they're, a, they're good to have or great to have and not, not like a must have. Okay. So I'm just letting you know, if you have these, if you add these, it's amazing. But uh, in case you don't have the technical bandwidth, if you don't have your developer bandwidth, if you don't have the time, uh, it's sometimes okay to skip these. Okay. Uh, now you don't want to say that in front of uh, the, um, uh, you know, the interviewer or, or let's say in front of your boss, if you're actually architecting something, you don't want to say that, but you just want to be aware at the back of your mind that these are some things that you can skip if you have less time available. Okay. So uh, let's start with accessibility. Okay. Accessibility is your platform needs to be accessible to all types of users, even people who even have disabilities, right? So you've seen text readers and you've seen different type of, uh, you know, uh, softwares trying to solve this problem. And then you have archivability. So you know that data becomes old really quickly on a platform, like let's say an e-commerce platform. You don't want to necessarily store three months or six months old user data immediately onto, onto your database, on your immediate database, right? You want to archive, keep archiving it. So uh, data such as whatever the user bought six months back, you necessarily don't want to have it in the current database. It's going to just slow it down, right? So you want to have to archive it now, but how archivable is the data is, is basically your archivability. Authentication, basically your security requirements, right? Privacy, uh, privacy means that you, you need to have the ability to hide the user transactions, even from developers. So in the sense, your developer or people who have the keys to the platform should not be able to go in and then pers recognize every single person by their name and their address. They, they can't have that kind of information. They can't just simply uh, download it or export it, right? That's very dangerous. So you have to have the ability so that, or some processes uh, in the architecture so that your developers can't just, uh, you know, uh, like take that data and leave uh, for a different company and then use that data there. So you need to have a lot of privacy, right? Uh, for the users that use this platform. Security, does all the data need to be encrypted in the database? Now, always, uh, the answer is not always yes, right? Because encryption, decryption takes time, right? It's uh, It leads to latency issues uh, later on. So you need to ensure, you need to be very sure that uh, the platform that you're building, is it a very, does it require that amount of security or does it not require that amount of security? And encryption also has multiple algorithms and multiple protocols, right? So what, what, which one is the one that we'll be uh, going for? So all of these, as you can see, are very important considerations, right? Very important considerations. So security is a very important consideration. Then you have usability. Uh, like I said, you know, the, uh, if, if you have like a social media platform or an e-commerce platform, you can't have uh, difficult usability, right? You can't have a platform that requires people to go through training manuals to learn and understand or to watch videos to learn and understand. So that's why usability is something that's very, very uh, critical for B2C platforms. So uh, the level of training that's required for users to be able to use your product. So it has to be very low for B2C products, can be high for B2B products, which are like enterprise products. Simplicity. So simplicity and usability are not same and accessibility. Accessibility, so usability and simplicity. Uh, the interviewer might try to confuse you or like, let's say uh, you want to uh, understand these deeply, you would, you might probably get confused between these three things. They're not the same. Simplicity is basically how easy is it for you to find information that you're looking for? How easy is it for you to flow or have navigation, the user flow, how easy it is and how, how many steps does it take for you to get from one place to another step? That's simplicity. Okay. Interoperability. This is very important for enterprise products because they need to work with multiple other softwares at the same time. So it's your ability of the uh, program to work with other programs via APIs, how easy it is. Uh, now there are softwares like Zapier and MuleSoft that make it really easy right now, but you need to have these programs structured in a way that it becomes very easy to integrate with Zapier, okay? Uh, then you have agility. How fast can changes be made um, or the entire direction be changed, okay? So let's say if you're using a technology like Strapi, 
at a POC MVP level, you're using Strapi. It's very easy for you to change direction because it's just, you just fill forms, you get APIs, right? Or if you're using something like Hasura, which basically generates APIs for you, very easy to change direction. If you're using Firebase, very easy to change direction, right? So agility, uh, if you're a startup, you're looking for agility to be able to change direction really quickly. If you're an enterprise, you're probably not looking for agility to change direction very quickly. Or if you have like a product market fit, if you already have an existing product, existing customers, you don't want, uh, it's, it's okay to sacrifice agility, okay? Testability, how much test coverage, this is quite uh, easy to understand. Feasibility, now let's, I'll come back to feasibility in a minute. So legal constraints, you know, GDPR and any other legal constraints based on the geographies that you're launching your product in or the type of customers you're dealing with, like, like health data, uh, there will be a lot of legal constraints around health data or financial data, right? Or stock market information. But other products like e-commerce, like legal constraints are not that, that uh, you know, stringent. So feasibility is the most important thing that nobody talks about. And this is, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing that a technology architect must be looking at. Even though it's part of cross-cutting architecture characteristics, but still, uh, I would say feasibility, in my opinion, is a very, very important thing because uh, because technology architecture has to be in context, in the, in the context of what kind of company are you working in or what kind of product are you building. So if you work for a very small company which has very tight uh, budgets, and very less time to come with the product to the market. And you're thinking that, you know, you want to build a very distributed microservice architecture, which will also have some serverless components and all of that. Then that's, uh, that's not feasible. That's not feasible because you don't have the time, you don't have the technical uh, capability in your teammates, you don't have the developer bandwidth, you don't have the budget for that. So feasibility is something technology architect, you know, always has to keep it on, on the top of his mind, always. That's my opinion from what I've seen. Because um, you can't keep building castles in the air. You have to be, uh, you have to have your feet planted on the ground because you have to know exactly how feasible is the solution that you're providing. Otherwise, there's no point to whatever exercise that you do. No matter how talented or how well-read you are in, in terms of technology architecture and how much experience you have. But if it's not feasible, then there's no point of spending uh, days and weeks on building a, building a very sustainable or scalable technology architecture, okay? So feasibility is extremely important. Uh, so this, these were our uh, cross-cutting uh, characteristics. So we have gone through operational, we have gone through structural, and we have gone through, gone through cross-cutting uh, characteristics. Okay, so all three of them are important. All three of them have multiple points that you, uh, there are terms that could be confused easily. So I've gone through every single term. And uh, you would want to consider these before you start building your architecture. So I hope I've gone through everything. Uh, and I hope you're also learning a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, you'll get awesome content like this. And I'll see you in the next video.